Hey, Coach Colin Castello with Shot Mechanics Basketball, and today I'm going to teach you three simple yet crazy effective post moves to add to your game. All right, so the first post move I love is the face up rip through. Now it's great because as you face up, it means that you can see the court, you can see your attack angles, you can see how the defender's playing you, and you can also see your teammates to pass to as well. So that's why I love the face up so much. So it all starts when you catch off of the post entry pass. So as I'm down here and I'm getting ready to get my post entry pass, boom, again, just like always, we want to catch with both feet in the air. That keeps our options alive. Now, with the reverse pivot that we start out with, you can move either foot. So I can either reverse pivot with my right to face up, just like that, or I can reverse pivot with my left to face up. The whole key with the face up is we want to follow our behind around and stay low, right? If I reverse pivot and I'm all high like this, I don't have a high center of gravity and it's going to be, I don't have a low center of gravity and it's going to be hard to beat the man once I come out of it. So I like to think about you're going to jab your foot towards the uh, baseline in this case. So I'm going to use my left foot. So as I come through and I reverse pivot, I'm going to jab my foot towards the baseline. Now the first one we're going to do is a rip through. So as I come through out of it, I'm going to rip the ball low and quick, boom, try to use that one dribble to get by my man and finish. Now there's kind of two options you've got here. Low rip if you're a little bit smaller of a post. If you're a taller post, a lot of times a high rip works well. Because if you rip high, a lot of times your elbows are going to clear some space as you come through. All right, we're not trying to catch somebody in the nose necessarily, but if you come through high, it forces them to give you this open space. So as you come through and put that dribble down, you're going to have a little bit of a lane to the basket. Now once you get there, it's all about the finish. And this is where you want to read the defender, right? So if I face up and I rip through, boom, coming through quick. If the defender stays on my back hip, boom, I can just put it up with a normal little jump hook, normal little finish, whatever it is I want to do, right? If I get through and they jump me and it looks like they're going to get a block here, I can try to get all the way to the opposite side of the paint and finish there, right? So you always want to read the defender and that's going to determine how you're going to finish the basketball. All right, so the next move is a counter to the jab rip through that we just did. And this is a jab cross. So it's all going to start the exact same. As the ball comes out to you, you're going to catch two feet in the air as you're coming across on the post up, right? So as the ball comes, going two feet in the air on the catch, boom, just like that. And then now we're all going to start the exact same way with that open reverse pivot, right? Following the behind around, adding a little stab. Now this is where the stab step is super important when you come through. Because as I come through with this reverse pivot, if I stab, boom, going towards the baseline, the odds are that that defender is going to slide to cut me off, right? And this is where the counter, the cross through comes into play. So as I come through, I'm going to stab, boom, show the ball down by my knee. That way I get them moving, and if they do get a piece of it, it's not going anywhere because it hits that knee, right? So I'm going to stab, then I'm going to cross this leg back over, and I'm going to execute a dribble trying to get back towards the middle of the floor, right? You can either do a power dribble, you can do a one-handed dribble, whatever it is, I'm trying to get that space so I can finish with a layup, with a jump hook, with a little fadeaway, whatever it is that you need to get, right? So the whole key here, the biggest key, number one, reverse pivot, keeping the ball low, boom. Number two, jab that foot towards the baseline to drive the defender that direction. Number three, get a good hard pound dribble to get your separation going back middle. You can do those things, you're going to get a wide open look because they're going to bite on that jab every time. All right, so the next one I love is the face up fadeaway. Now this is great to have in your game if you're smaller at your position than the other players, right? So if you're an undersized post or you're an undersized guard and you find yourself in the paint on the catch. So it's going to start out like a normal face up like we've been working on, right? Catching with two feet in the air, ready to attack either direction. So as the ball comes through here, boom, I'm catching. I'm starting with that same old reverse pivot, right? Trying to drive my guy out of his space. So as I come through and reverse pivoting, jabbing just like before. Now with the fadeaway, it's all about if I jabbed and I didn't really get him to move and maybe he cut me off middle so my options are limited, all you're gonna do is off this jab, you're going to rock onto your back foot. So you're jabbing, rocking onto your back foot and there's going into a little one-legged fadeaway. You see guys like Kevin Durant do this a ton, Kobe Bryant does this a ton, um, even like scores like, like Clay Thompson when he gets in the paint does this a lot because it's a really great move. If I get here, if they're on this front knee, by the time I rock back, right, I've got space for them to get my jumper off. Now it's a little bit of a fadeaway, so it's a tougher shot. So the key that you really want to think of is getting your follow through up high. A lot of players have a tendency when they shoot a fadeaway, when they come through, boom, they get a really flat fadeaway because they're trying to get that power out of there. And what that does is it takes away kind of that perfect arc on your jumper, mathematically making it harder to hit the shot. So what I would really recommend doing, as you come here, boom, and you're fading out of it, try to get that elbow above your eye. That way you get that optimal arc on your shot. Ball's gonna go in the hoop more than it won't, right? Again, just like other fadeaways that we've talked about and worked on, you also wanna target as quick as possible. It doesn't do any good to do your jab, 
go into your fadeaway, and then find the hoop when the ball's right here getting ready to be released. It's the exact same thing as any shot. As you come through, my eyes are snapping up right now before this foot's even lifted. That way I can come through, find the rim, find my target, get an accurate shot. Right, you can follow those tips, you're gonna hit way more fadeaways, and you're gonna be able to shoot over taller players if you catch inside the paint. All right, if this video helped you out, go ahead and hit that like button down below, and then head to the comment section down below that and let me know what sort of video you wanna see next. Uh, this is a channel for the people, by the people, and we run pretty much everything off a of request, so leave it down below and hopefully we get to it. And if you're new to shot mechanics, you're gonna wanna do two things. Number one, hit that subscription button down below because we put out videos every week and they're all gonna get you better, I guarantee it. The second thing you're gonna wanna do is click the button above or the link in the description to get a free copy of my number one scoring workout. This is a scoring workout that's gonna change the way you think about training and probably increase your scoring average the very first time you use it. That's how powerful it is. And if you notice the sweet machine in the videos, that's the doctor dish that you can get it at the link down below. Um, it's awesome for coaches, for players, for trainers. It's one of my favorite tools to use. So I would definitely head down below, check that out if you're looking to kind of take that training to the next level or if you're working with a bunch of kids in a coaching situation. So highly recommend it, check it out. Again, I'm Coach Colin Castell with Shot Mechanics Basketball. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, flash on.